As you guys know, I love my Surface Duo and my Surface Duo 2. And even though I think that they are both great devices, no matter how great they are, if the battery is going dead too quickly, that really puts quite the hamper on that experience. With that in mind, and with the fact that Duo and Duo 2 both have a battery life that I would describe as being okay, not tremendous, not fantastic, not terrible, simply okay. We're going to talk today about kind of what you should expect out of the battery on your Duo or your Duo 2 and a few things that you can do to try to extend that battery life or perhaps even just better manage the battery life that you're going to get. So the first thing we need to talk about is what the normal experience kind of has been for those of us using Surface Duo. And to do that, I actually asked a bunch of people to give me some information about what their idle battery drain is. So basically, you charge up your phone, set it by your bedside, and just let it sit there overnight. And then what did you lose over that night and I got several responses both in a community post and in some other comments elsewhere and I kind of compiled them into a couple of different sections and we're going to talk about which ones were most common. So I had four people that told me that their battery drained between one and four percent overnight. I would consider that to be very very good idle battery drain. So your phone's sitting there, it's in your pocket conceivably, it's not really losing any battery, that's going to help a ton. Another four people though said that they lost between 6 and 10%. That is the category that generally speaking I am in. Again, still not terrible, but maybe it could be a little bit better, but even still pretty solid. Two people told me they lost between 11 and 20%, and then two more people told me they were losing over 20%. I would say those four people are the ones that perhaps are going to benefit from the instructions from this, the rest of this video here. So if you kind of fall into that bracket, this video is probably for you. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to find out if there are any particular apps that are running amok individual apps that are causing the majority of your problems. What I would advise people to do is basically what I said here in the beginning. Take your phone, charge it up fully or pretty close to it. Make sure you know where you were at. Let it sit overnight. It's better if you do it fully because that actually resets the battery statistics we're going to look at, at least in the default app. Charge it up fully, let it sit overnight, check it out, see where you're at. At that point, go to your phone, go into your settings, scroll down until you see battery, Click on that, and then from there, click up top right, and then hit battery usage, and you're gonna see a list of applications and percentages next to them. Now, most of the time, for most people, none of this stuff is gonna be all that crazy, right? You might see, you know, if you're lucky, you're gonna see an app that used way more than it ever should have. It was in the background the whole time, whatever, and then from there, we can take steps to mitigate that. You can also click up top right and hit show full device usage because sometimes it's the screen, it's the mobile network standby, it's things like that, okay? But if you don't see an app in here that is just blowing your mind, wow, there's no reason for that to be using so much battery, we're gonna move on to the next step. If you do see something like that, well then let's go back in here, let's say, Talon is using 40% of my battery in the background the whole time. Well, then at that point, you can click on that and you can click on battery restriction and restrict its background usage and that's going to help a lot. Or perhaps you just uninstall it and find a whole different app to use because you're like, wow, that's crazy. We're going to use a different app. If you did not see anything in here that really jumped out to you, we're going to move on to that next step. Let's go back. We need to have developer options enabled to do this. And I've shown this a million times. I'll continue showing it. You're going to click on about. You're gonna scroll down to build number, click build number a bunch of times until it says you are a developer. You can then go back, go into system, and then you should have developer options there. So now that we're in developer options, we're looking for running services. Go ahead and click on that. And what you're gonna do here is you're gonna scroll through these first and just see if anything, basically these are apps that are running right now, okay? So you're gonna look and see if there's anything in here that looks weird to you, okay? and Beyond that, you're just going to kind of watch for a little while. Just sit back and watch this screen because you're going to see occasionally apps that will pop up, do something, and then leave, okay? So first thing is just look and see, is there anything in here that should not be here? And I'll give you a perfect example of this. And some of my testing for this channel, I've installed various launchers to test. Well, when I looked at this, AIO launcher that I just tested was running in the background. Even though it wasn't set as my default launcher, there it was, still running. 
I uninstalled it. Niagara Launcher was there running. I uninstalled it. The rest of these now make sense, all right? So link to Windows makes sense to me. I'm using that. That's my phone link app, okay? Overdrop makes sense to me. Why? Because if I go over here, this widget is an Overdrop widget, so it's running. Bluetooth carrier services linked to Windows a second time. Why it needs two processes, I'm not entirely sure, but for some reason it does. Google's going to run in the background a lot of the time. Talon is running in the background because in order to get notifications, it has to run in the background and it literally intercepts Twitter's notifications and then shows me those notifications in Talon instead. So if I get rid of that, I'm not going to get notifications in Talon anymore. That's fine. Wear OS is running in the background is what it is. Microsoft Launcher, again, that's my launcher. It's going to be running. So what do you do if you see an app running that you don't want to be running in the background? There's a couple of things you can do, right? You can, for one, you can just stop it, but it may come back. So the second thing you can do, if you go back again and back again and back again, you can go to your applications, see all apps, and then you can pick an app and you can go into battery and then restrict background usage again, just like you did in that prior screen. And this should somewhat prevent it from popping up in the background and doing stuff. You can also click on battery optimization, find your app in that screen, and then optimize the battery. I've also had a lot of people tell me that they had some success saving some battery by restricting background on the Microsoft Launcher itself. So find the Microsoft Launcher battery, background restriction and then turn that on maybe save a little bit there i've done it myself i've seen no negative side effects i'm not sure if it's helped any battery or not hard to really say but i guess every little bit might help but there is once again another option for wrangling in troublesome applications let's go back again and we're going to go back into developer options here i've talked about this on another video prior but we're going to compile all this information here you're going to scroll all the way down until you see standby apps and click on that option while you're in here. Basically what we are doing is we are changing the category that these devices are put in and it's going to affect how much battery they can kind of use. And let's look at information here from Google themselves. These are the buckets as they describe them. Active means the app is currently being used or was very recently used. This is an app that you do use relatively often. Working set means it's regularly used, frequent means often, but not every day, rare means not frequently used, and you're probably not going to see restricted on any of them. So what does that mean? So an active app is an app that you're currently using. It's been launched actively. The app is running in a foreground service. It has a sync adapter associated with the content provider used by the foreground app, and you're probably getting notifications from that app. Working set is an app that you probably use daily, and it has mild restrictions on its ability to run jobs and trigger alarms. Frequent apps are apps you use regularly, but not necessarily every day, and it does have stronger restrictions on its ability to run jobs and trigger alarms. And then Rare basically has strict restrictions on the ability to run jobs and trigger alarms. So these are apps we don't want to let do anything in the background unless we're actually doing it ourselves. So if we go back here, you're just going to scroll through these and find apps that make sense to you that you want to put in that rare category. So here's a good example. I don't know what retouch would be doing in the background. I have no idea. I use this app all the time, but it's not going to do anything in the background. So we're going to change it to rare. I literally never use Robinhood. Let's put that on rare. Snapseed shouldn't be doing anything in the background. Rare. Just keep in mind as you were doing this, that if you change an app to rare and you stop getting notifications from it that you wanted, you probably made a mistake. Go back in, set it back to something else. Maybe you just remember what it was before, take screenshots or something and put it back active, frequent, whatever it might have been before. Easy enough to reverse. So the last one involving apps is really simple. Just uninstall the apps you're not using. If you installed something to try it out and you don't use it, get rid of it. Uninstall it. The only thing it can be doing is something bad. If it's just sitting there, best case scenario, it's doing nothing. Okay, so just uninstall it. And similarly to that, okay, if you go into your app drawer and you're looking through and you see Microsoft Start or you see some packed in app that you don't use, disable it. Long press on that app, go to app info and hit disable. Shut the thing down so that it can't possibly be doing anything. So keep your apps nice and tidy. So moving on from kind of wrangling in troublesome apps, these are some basic things you can do just in general. So Surface Duo and Duo 2, these screens are both OLED screens, which means displaying darker colors or blacks more specifically 
use less power. So you're going to want to enable dark mode and potentially even use a dark wallpaper. So you can see here the wallpaper I use is quite dark, but I'm not doing that for battery saving. I just think that it looks cool. But you could use a dark wallpaper to potentially save a little bit of battery life. As far as dark mode goes, I believe it is under display. And then you'll see here toggle dark theme. That is going to help save a little bit of battery. Now, another setting you can quickly change to potentially save battery on Duo 2. This does not apply to Duo 1, but on Duo 2, you have the option to use 5G. So if you don't care about 5G, and let's be honest here, 5G is faster than LTE. This is absolutely true. However, for most things you're doing, most of the time, it doesn't really matter. So if you are of that mindset that you're like, I don't really care about this being 5G, go into network, go into mobile network, and then look for preferred network type, click that and change it to LTE, and you will be disabling your 5G. And potentially, you're gonna save a decent chunk of battery by doing that. We've actually had carriers, Verizon, T-Mobile, come out and blatantly say to people, if you wanna save battery, do this. Turn off 5G and you will save some battery. Kind of in this same realm and in the same area, if you go to connected devices, if you're not using your Bluetooth, if you don't use NFC, disable both of those. They're easy enough to toggle off and that's gonna save a little bit of battery. NFC is very low power consumption but it's not zero. So if you don't use NFC, this is Duo 2, no NFC on Duo 1, turn that off. Same thing goes for Bluetooth. Kind of still in this radios section, if you go back into your settings and you scroll down to location, you can scroll down and look for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth scanning. You're gonna to wanna to turn those off. Basically what's happening is your phone is using Bluetooth and Wi-Fi to check for things, right? Known locations type of things. So you're near McDonald's, it scans it, sees McDonald's Wi-Fi, goes, oh, you're near the McDonald's. And basically what that's doing is it's helping it find your location without using GPS. Now you would think because GPS actually uses more power that that would be something you would want because it's gonna be finding your location using a lower powered means. But the problem is it tends to do this just randomly in the background, whereas the GPS doesn't really do that. You don't really have instances all that often where your phone just actually connects to GPS to see where you are unless you're actively asking it to do so. Whereas this is something that it just seems to just do apparently from what I've read in the background probably more than you would like for it to be doing and by virtue of that it does waste a little bit of battery. You can also go back a screen and look for Google location accuracy and you can turn that off as well because as you see here Google may collect location data periodically and use this data in an anonymous way to improve location accuracy blah 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 blah. blah. So it's checking when you're not doing things to see the location. The problem is when you turn this off, certain apps may not work correctly. So you're pulling up your Wendy's app and you're gonna try and find the nearest Wendy's to you. It might not be able to find your location accurately enough to find your nearest location. So I have this turned on because it affects too many apps, but if you really wanna help improve your battery in this realm, that's a way to do it. And I've seen many people report this saving a good amount of battery. This next one is a little bit fascinating to me. So I've talked before about phone link. In fact, if you want to know how I'm capturing my screen here, this is phone link. I'm just streaming my phone to my computer and then recording it that way. Phone link is fantastic. It is one of my favorite things that Microsoft has ever done, but it does use a decent amount of battery. And I know this for a fact. So in my experience, through experimentation, I was noticing that some nights my phone, my Duo 2, would lose 20, 30% of its charge overnight. I'd wake up and I'd look at it and I'd be like, wow, this is unbelievable. Then some other nights, it wouldn't. It would lose five, six, maybe 10 at the most percent. I was like, what is with this inconsistency? So then for two or three nights in a row, I think it was three nights in a row, but I forgot to unplug it one of those nights. I plugged it in to get it to 100, and then I, my intention was at some point to roll over and unplug it, but I did not do that. So I only got two nights of data. What I did is I, in my settings here, you can quickly pull this down and you can toggle off phone link right there. You can just click that and it turns it off, simple enough. I turned off phone link, and then what would happen is I would barely lose any battery at all. So I was like, well, phone link is clearly the culprit. Well, last night I did not turn phone link off, but I let my phone sit there at 100%. And lo and behold, I was at 93% this morning, 7%. That's crazy. Phone link was on, but I didn't lose much battery. That is when I realized what was happening. 
Some nights I make the mistake of leaving Discord up on one of my monitors here on my computer. And a lot of the time on Discord, there will be a GIF or something that someone has put into that little feed of messages and that GIF moving around, or perhaps it's not Discord, perhaps it's Twitter and there's again a GIF going. It will prevent my computer from going to sleep. Phone link stays connected all night and I lose a ton of battery. Last night, my phone went, my computer, I should say, went to sleep as it should have. So when I looked at my phone and you pull this down twice you'll see where it says rg boss that's the dumb name for my computer it didn't say anything it just said link to windows because no computer had connected to it because my computer was asleep phone link uses a ton of battery now by default it should not be using mobile data so when you're away from your house theoretically it shouldn't be doing anything that's probably a good thing while I'm home, it's not that big of a deal, right? Because I've got chargers everywhere. I've got my Duo dock here in front of me. It's literally sitting in my Duo dock right now. So not that big of a deal when I leave. I don't want phone link doing anything because it's going to kill my battery. But this is an important thing to keep in mind. Think about this. Do some experimentation yourself. Disable it. See what your battery drain is then and make your decision of what to do from there. But just keep it in mind, it's using your battery. Another really simple one that people for some reason don't often think about is just using the battery saving mode. Go back into your settings, scroll down to battery, and then look for battery saver and turn that on. You can see what it says there. It's going to turn on dark theme, which we've already done because it does help. And it turns off or restricts background activity, some visual effects, and other features like you can read it. I'm not going to say it because I don't want to trigger everybody's stuff in their house, but it turns that kind of stuff off. Now, if you don't want to run Battery Saver, there's some other things you can do, like that last bit, turning that feature off. Well, we can just do that ourselves. Go to your Google app, click this up here, go into Settings, click on Google Assistant, look for Hey Who, hmm, click on that, and toggle that off. I keep that turned off because I have speakers everywhere, and what is super annoying is I'll say the thing to try and interact with one of them. My phone turns on, listens for a second, realizes I'm talking to the speaker, shuts off, it's super annoying. So I turn that off. Let's say though, you don't like the assistant on your phone at all. You can disable it. Right back where we just now were, scroll down, keep scrolling until you see, we're looking for general, general. Click on that and just turn the assistant off all together and that is going to save a decent amount of battery the only caveat to this and the reason it's not is because i like to use it on my watch i can hold a button here and i can ask it a question say a thing i use that if it's turned off on my phone it doesn't work on my watch either so i do in fact leave that on in terms of things to do on your phone that's pretty much everything i can possibly think of to help improve your battery if you know of anything else drop it in the comments down below the next thing that i do that really helps me is really really simple i keep chargers and charging docks all around me so i will link in the description a link to the duo dock which i'm using right now a link to a decent and inexpensive fast charger and another link to a decent and inexpensive car fast charger i love having a fast charger in my car because what happens in my car i put it in my dock my screens are set to a 30 minute timeout by the way go to display, put your time out to a lower time so you're not waste, wasting battery that way. But I leave my screens on in the car because I like just having it there. I don't have to fiddle with it. I want to just look over, see the track that's playing, skip the track, whatever I, I need to do. But that uses a lot of battery. But what tends to happen for me is in my short trips around town, I gain battery in the car because I have a good charger. So links to all that stuff will be down below in the description. So thanks for watching this very long video. I hope that it's useful to some of you, if not most of you. Maybe you'll find at least one or two things in there that you did not know about. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.